morning, Isabel. How are you doing today? I'm good, and you? I'm doing good. Thank you so much for taking the time today to be here with us, to share your life story with us. Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you for having me. I'm so honored to, to be here. Oh, it's a pleasure. And uh, for people who don't know you, uh, would you mind maybe just sharing a little bit about you, what you do, where are you from, where do you live? Okay, um, I, I am Isabel. I am somebody who stutters. I have been stuttering since I was 17. Um, I currently live in, in Westminster, Colorado. I am from Denver, Colorado, so I've just been here on my little hike. I am a social media influencer um, and a stay-at-home mom. I am currently looking for a, a side hustle, just a job on the side. Um, but yeah. That's great. You just mentioned that you started stuttering at the age of uh, 17. Yeah. How did stuttering affect your life? Because most people start stuttering as a child. So they grew up like stuttering, but for you, it was slightly different. Um, so how did stuttering affect your life? Um, stuttering after, you know, the age of 17, I was a um, junior in high school going on to my senior. Um, and I would say it was hard just because I didn't understand it. I didn't really know the label, um, to name it. So it was kind of like, I pushed it on the back. Like I wasn't trying to to accept it or to acknowledge it or to just deal with it in general. Um, I would say that it affected my social life. I, I wasn't able to order food by myself. I had to have another person order it for me. I wasn't able to make any any doctor's appointments. I had my mom do that for me. Uh, for a long period of my time, of my lifetime, I was pretending to be a person I wasn't. Um, and that affected me a lot because I lost myself in the process of pretending to be fluent and pretending to be a person that I'm not at the end of the day so it was challenging um just coming to accept the fact that I stutter there are a lot of challenges that come with uh stuttering and it's not always easy yeah. and um do you think something triggered your like speech at the age of uh 17 do you remember when did you realize like wow I am speaking in a different way. Did something happen or you don't know? Um, honestly, I don't know. I did experience a traumatic event physically that changed my life in general. I don't know if because of that traumatic experience I had, if that triggered my brain um, or my body to maybe go ahead and react to protect me in a way that it made my stutter more more invincible or more how do you say it more um noticeable more audible. more noticeable yes um yeah I I don't know and because I'm the only person in my family who stutters I don't know if it was if it's genetically um, I currently, from my, my, my mom's side of the family, nobody has a stutter. 
Um, and for my dads, I have no idea. So I, I, I have learned that, that people who stutter have it at an early age, but some people who stutter, they don't have it in an early age, but come later in life. So I don't know if for, in my case, if that's just, if it's genetic, but didn't happen till later on. So I really don't know if it's a genetic thing or a trauma thing. I don't know. Yeah. And um, you mentioned your, um, your, your daughter. Mm -hmm. How becoming a mother changed your, your relationship with your, with your stuttering? Um, do you plan in the future to talk about like stuttering with your daughter? Um, a hundred percent. Absolutely. Um, this is never, it's never going to be something that I hide from her. It's definitely going to be something that I'm open about because at the end of the day is who I am. Um, if I'm being quite honest, my daughter's going to know, like, I'm going to be an open book to her. Um, she's going to know everything. And hopefully by doing that, that's just going to help her see how confident and how um. It's just how confident I am being a person who stutters. And um, what advice would you give to parents of uh, children and adults who uh, like who also stutter? Because for parents, sometimes it's not always easy to deal with those uh, challenges. Um, both if they are the ones who like stutter or if they have a child who does. So what would you be your, you know, advice if you could give some? Okay. Um, I can't speak a lot on this aspect just because I was in a child who had a stutter. So I didn't have that ch childhood um, of, of somebody who stutters. But as a parent, as somebody who stutters, my advice for, for parents who have kids who stutter or for parents who stutter and have kids who stutter, it's just to be patient with your kid. Um, your kid, all of us have been through that, through that phase in life where we are kids and we're confused and we're trying to figure ourselves out and we're trying to understand all these emotions. So just imagine adding on to having a stutter and not being able to understand it. Um, so I can only imagine those emotions that kids have to go through. So just be patient, um, talk about it. If you're a parent who stutters, talk about it, talk, your, talk about your experience um, and just make sure that you are educated on stuttering so you can educate your, your children. I know that we only have a certain amount of information um, due to just not having all the answers. Um, so we can only learn so much that we can teach our kids. So just be just be patient. And I would say to to talk about how it's okay to to be different. It's okay that you are not like everyone else. I mean, at the end of the day, everybody is is different. Even people who are fluent are are different to to society, to other people. Um, and that's fine. It's not a crime. It's not a crime to have a stutter. Um, and you honestly don't need to be fluent to accomplish your dreams. It's okay to have a stutter, and it's okay to to stutter and I love your confidence on what you're saying to just be you no matter mm -hmm. how like uh, how you talk um, how was your process of like acceptance and what made you feel comfortable to freely talk about like stuttering on your social media 
to raise to raise awareness uh, about this topic, especially as someone who like started stuttering at the age of uh, 17 and you are still very young, which means yeah. that it's not been so long, probably. So it's yeah, no, I have seen. so how was your process of self-acceptance and what made you feel comfortable? What gives you the like strength to go out there and just talk about it? Mm -hmm. Um, I have to give props to my daughter. She pushed me so, so, so much, even not just in speech, but in my life in general. She really, really changed me. Um, before I had her, I had all these, all these thoughts of change and, you know, I wanted to get help as in speech therapy. But it was always a, a thought I had, but never an action. So, after you know, like after I found out that I was pregnant, it just hit me. I didn't mm -hmm. want her to, to be around me no, knowing that I was ashamed of my stutter, that I hated mama, I stuttered, that I was embarrassed of it because her seeing that is going to affect her even if I am trying to avoid it. It's going to affect her in the long run. So I just, I want to change. I wanted to better myself. And that's where it all started. I I began to seek help. I began to educate my, myself. Be, be, because how I mentioned earlier, uh, stuttering, I didn't even know that that was the, the label. So I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know how many people stutter. I didn't even know that 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 there are other people like me out there. For the longest time, I really thought I was the only person who stutters because I didn't know anybody else. Um, I was surrounded with all these fluent people. And because of that, I I hated it even more. I was ashamed of it even more. And I began to question my my myself even more. Um, so yeah, it was just the process of change and just me wanting to be better for my daughter, me wanting um to to make her proud now the whole aspect of the of the social media thing I growing up you know I'm the only person in my family who stutters I never had a role model to go to ask for advice I didn't know anybody else that had a stutter so at the end of the day I didn't have that person that understood me um, so I had to go through a lot of challenges all by, all, by, all by myself. And even though it was hard, at the end of the day, I'm really grateful for it because it made me the person I am today. Um, but I wanted to be that person. I want to be that person I didn't have for my, my studying community. I want to to help others and just let everybody know that you are not alone and you don't have to go through this alone. That's awesome. And it's amazing that you found in your daughter the strength and the courage to succeed, to move for, forward and not to let stuttering to completely paralyze you and to block you from living your dreams, from being who you want to be as a person, as a mother, as a woman, you know, so that's mm -hmm. great. Your daughter now, she's, uh, how old is she now? Uh, two. She's two. She's two and a half. Oh, that's cute. And and uh, what is her name? Her name is Sophie. Sophie, oh, that's a nice name. That's beautiful. <laughs> and uh, about the social media uh, content that you have been talking about, raising awareness on stuttering, what has been the feedback? Do you have more feedback from people who like stutter or from people who don't stutter? And how does how does it work? Um, so the feedback has been great. Um, it's basically just to keep it coming. 
um, I have been able to help a couple people just be more confident towards their stutter, more acceptance towards their stutter. And if I'm being honest, the whole, not the, 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 not the reason, but this little girl I made in speech therapy, she pushed me. Um, and I'm, and she's a little kid. Okay. Um, my therapist, she talked to me about her and she was like, yeah, I really think it'll be a good idea if you if you meet her and talk to her. So I did. I had a session. Um, it wasn't a, a long session. I just had a session. I talked to her. I told her that, you know, I wanted to make a YouTube channel so I can help our, our community. And towards the end, she told me to go for it, to do it, that that just in that short amount of time, I was able to help her. And now she's going to take um, the stuff I said and be okay uh, with her stutter in school. Um, she personally told me that she loves my quotes, um, as in my quotes is the stuff I'm saying. Um, it, like I would, I would say something to her She'll be like, who said that? And I'll be like, I did. And she'll be like, oh my God, I love your quotes. Um, so yeah, so just noticing the impact I made in her life, um, it just, it pushed me and all this feedback I'm getting from my community, it just, it pushes me more to continue to help, to, to continue to help out. That's super awesome. That's really nice that you are able to have an impact on someone else's life. And sometimes we think about helping others and we think about changing the whole world when sometimes we can help someone next to us. Yeah. Help really like it starts next door. You don't need to go far to help someone. And sometimes we don't even know which impact we are having on some on someone else's life because we might not know them in person so maybe your quotes have been seen by someone that you don't know and this person was super touched yeah. so you never know like this is great that you um to have this uh feedback from time to time when you get to also know the faces of people who are impacted in a positive way with what you talk about so that's really nice and um, people knew you as a fluent speaker, like as uh, someone with no like stuttering. Did you have a lot of people asking you how come now you are speaking differently? Did you have some to go through bullying? How was that for you? Um, if I'm being honest, I didn't experience bullying in that aspect of my speech. It was more of how I looked. Um. I would say that I wasn't open about my, my stuttering. It was something that I hated um, going on to college because in high school, I didn't re really get to experience my I stutter completely. I mean, it happened like towards the end. So in college, it really, hit me if that makes sense it was like hello I'm here just because I was on my own and now I had to like grow up I had to be on my own I had to do things that I didn't do like order food and make uh, appointments um and because I wasn't open about it because I hated it so much I wasn't the type of person to talk about it and how I mentioned earlier because I was pretending to be a person I'm not. Um, after it was noticeable in like a friend group or in class or me talking to a professor, I never, I never felt comfortable to talk about it. Um, and they never asked either. And at the time I appreciated that because I wasn't trying to talk about it. So I just acted like, oh, it didn't happen. Like, 
um, you probably just heard some, something wrong. And it's silly because my, my professors obviously knew. I mean, I had to do presentations and group pre presentations. So they obviously knew, but I, I was ignorant and I put it in my head that they that they didn't know, like I was invincible, like nobody knew. But I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty sure everybody knew. Most likely they did notice, but they didn't want to say something because they didn't know if it was something very sensitive topic to, to talk about. So it's not always easy to know when to mention to someone, you know, so yeah. I understand. If you could name like three things that you wish how like that people who don't like stutter would know about stuttering so that they could treat people who like stutter sometimes with more patience or in a better way what would be these three things that you wish everyone to know about like stuttering and how they should treat people who um who who stutter um this is a good question but hard question at the same time because you can't control other people's emotions you can't control other people's thoughts or or behaviors yes it would be awesome if people around us had more patience towards people who stutter um just because having having that patient it wouldn't give us a um as much anxiety like oh i need to talk oh um and they ask me a question i need to hurry up and answer or oh I'm I'm in this drive through and all these cars are behind me. I need to like hurry up. Um, yes, m m patience it would be nice to have. Um, unfortunately though, uh, we human beings sometimes lack in that category of patience. Uh, but yeah, just patience and just acknowledging that we are all different and that's okay. We don't need to be all fluent. And I think that because we are in this society, we are just immediately uh, taught that in order to have a good job, you need to have good communication skills or in order to, you know, just to be normal, you need to do all these things. But at the end of the day, you don't. Um, and and that's fine. I I don't know. I just feel like because of what society has put us through and taught us, it made us people who stutter not feel comfortable enough to to speak out or to come out or to accept who they are. So we tend to close ourselves in a box. Um and doing that, it hurts us and it makes it harder for us to bloom at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, just the fact that our community is bringing awareness into, into stuttering now, if you, if you think about it, a lot of people are now, now talking about it and being more open and acceptance about it. Um, so I feel like our community is in a great, a great path, a great start. Um, hopefully throughout time, our, our perspective and fluency uh, changes. That's great. And what message would you like to send to people who, who stutter? Um... that it's okay um, if you haven't accepted your stutter. We are on our own time, our own journey. Um, just keep an open mind to change. It doesn't have to happen now, but just you, you keeping that in mind of, I wanna change, I want to better my, my, myself is eventually going to to pay off. And I just want them to know that 
you you don't have to be fluent to you don't have to be fluent to achieve your your dreams and goals you you are amazing you are wonderful you are strong you are brave uh don't let your stutter stop you from accomplishing the things that you dream of um and just to keep in mind that it is okay to stutter and it's okay to have a stutter that's great thank you so much isabel and for people who want to follow you on social media and also learn more about i think you do tutorials on uh, makeup uh, also mm -hmm. right? yeah so, if uh, people want to learn, particularly the ladies want to learn how to do the makeup and they want to follow you or if they want to follow you just to to see about what you're talking concerning stuttering, in any case, how can they find you? Um, my stuttering channel on YouTube is Stutter Queen um, and my makeup stuff is on Instagram. It's, it's Isa88. Um, and on my studying channel, I have linked my my personal uh YouTube channel, and in that channel, I I do more makeup tutorials. Isabel, thank you so much for taking the time to talk today to share, and it's really nice to hear from you to learn from you and uh, to get to know you and your like story which is quite different than most like stories that I know personally um, I think you are the first person that I know they started is the train as a young adult uh, mm -hmm. at uh, 17 so everyone else that I know they started like the train as a child so mm -hmm. it's not so common and I guess the challenges are different uh, also because you have to get used to a new reality after being a grown-up uh, person. So I cannot imagine uh, it must be very challenging. And um, congrats for your strength and your determination and how brave you are to just talk to just talk about it and um, for being an inspiration to others for impacting them in a positive way so oh, that's great yeah and thank you again for having me i'm super honored and i hope n this video can can help um a lot of people and and just super quick and just know that change is amazing but change is hard and changing brings a peer and fear is something that holds us back a lot. Um, but just know that fear at the end of the day is just an emotion. It comes and goes. Feel everything you need to feel at that moment. And just keep on moving forward because life is, is too beautiful to just hate your stutter. Hate your... Hate something that you can't control indeed indeed you have to learn how to embrace it mm -hmm. and keep moving forward despite the challenges that we have to go through yeah yeah isabel thank you so much thank you for your time and thank you for being here for your beauty for your mm -hmm. <laughs> smile thank you and I give you props too. I mean, you are out here um, and how you said, like, you do have a job, but you are also doing this to help other people. So you are amazing at, at, your, at your job, at this. And I really appreciate you. And I, I love that there are people who like you out here. And I just want to say that and thank you so much for just being so flexible and just so I don't know like you are just you're doing good you're doing great keep it up yeah thank you thank you so much for your words it's very touching to be honest um thank you so much thank you
because it takes a lot of uh, you know effort and time and everything to do everything and uh, and it's nice when we have a positive like feedback and some kind of words of you know like encouragement so thank you of course thank you Isabel have a great day and you too bye, bye.